it's, it's, it's okay sir okay. yeah yeah it's okay sir so it's okay. so uh, uh, my dear friend uh, dear uh, godimulla director of the institute professor professor uh, novikov and shamsuluda and my uh, loving elizar of fellows and today i'm going to talk on the deformity correction and uh, uh, you know the deformity is a very important things in the human body and if you think about the history of management of the deformity of the limb you can see in the pre elizar of era the only available technique for the correction of the limb deformities were using acute correction there was no satisfactory treatment for severe limb deformities only at that time they did the prosthetic fittings and most of the times they did the amputation and then at the at, at the end of early 50s the elizara popularized the principles of gradual destruction of osteogenesis that is we call the law of uh, destruction of osteogenesis law of tension and stress so these are the places i love to show this is the orthopedic capital this is our biggest institute we including our director also you can see here it's very beautiful place now now this is my current place this is my local this is elizar of 4m the man meat method and magician learning elizar is like learning a language teach alphabets grammar improve your vocabulary vocabulary and use it nobody can teach you how to write a short story a novel or a poem read biomechanics of the ring fixator safe corridor in the biology its uses and various permutations you should have to know so you have so many ways to build a cat based on one experience and concepts like one's language is different from others and which this video oh, okay you can see here now uh, before doing uh, for any correction of the limb we should have to know the normal and what is abnormal some basic terminologies we should have to know the joint centers joint lines limb axis and the joint orientation joint center center of the hip point in the center of the femoral head you can see here if you take the three points take the three points in the femoral head one here one here or one here and connect all this and draw the perpendicular line you'll get the center of the head of the femur joint center center of the distal femur point at the top of the femoral notch center of the proximal tibia point between the tibial spines you can see in the right side center of the femoral notch center of the tibial spines and center of the femoral condyles as soft tissue center and of course the center of the tibia joint center center of the distal tibia and mid width width of the tibial profound you can see here the number one this is center of the soft tissue center of the bone and center of the talus this is the axis of the tibia and joint lines hip joint orientation line tip of the trochanter and center of the head this is called the hip joint orientation line and this is distal femoral joint line these are all basic things before doing any surgery in the limb you should have to know that proximal tibial joint line if line cross the concave part of the tibia aspect of the tibial plateau this is the uh, joint line tibial proximal tibial joint line distal tibial joint line is also very important line across flat tibial plafond or dome of talus limb axis mechanical axis and anatomical axis this is very important is a straight line that connects the joint center of the proximal and distal joint and anatomical axis it is the mid diaphyseal line of the bone segment 
axis of the femur, mechanical axis, it is a straight line that connects the center of the hip to the center of the distal femur. Anatomical axis is also that it is the mid divisional line of the femur. And tibiofemoral angle, whenever you should think about this, the angle between the anatomical and the mechanical axis of the femur, that is six degree on an average. Axis of the tibia, mechanical axis line from the center of the proximal tibia to the center of the distal tibia. In anatomical axis, mid diverticular line, both the axes are almost same, anatomical and mechanical axis. Joint orientation angle. Uh, this figure, if you look at the right side, this is very important. If you look at this right side, there are four angles you can see here on an average. The, this is 87, 87, this is 90, this is 90. Just to memorize in your mind. Joint orientation angle, LPFA, 90 degree. This is hip joint orientation line. I draw a line here. This angle is called the lateral proximal femoral angle, ALP angle. ALPFA angle, <coughs> normally it is 90 degree, average 95 to 90. Knee joint orientation, it is seen by two angles. You can see, I just now I've told you, 87 here and 87 here. And JLCA is 0 to 2 degree. Joint line convergent angle, 0 to 2 degree. Orientation angle, joint orientation angle. Ankle joint orientation, this is seen by LDTA. This is LDTA, lateral distal tibial angle, normally 90 degree. <coughs> now you can see here these are the four angles if you see any problem in the hip problem in the knee you should calculate from the medial side the lateral side and problem in the ankle so now regarding the understanding of deformity correction before embarking of the deformity correction please remember is there is a deformity or is this bone is deformed we should have to know the source of the deformity. It may be congenital or acquired. Level of the deformity and which plane of the deformity and magnitude of the deformity, how much your deformity is, where to do the osteotomy and what type of osteotomy you are going to do. And you are going for a correction, the equity of gradual correction and which kind of fixation, external or internal fixation. As the Elizabeth of surgeon, we are doing the external fixation. Never operate on the wrong bone. So these are the understanding deformity correction. Before doing any surgery in the bone, you should have to keep it in your mind. Regarding the analysis, deformity and correction, uh, just think, I am okay, you are okay. That means that is everything is normal. Alignment is normal. When I am okay, you are bent. That is how to measure and define deformity. And intelligent games, that means deformity option for correction. And for treatment strategies, come lie on my couch. So this is the outline you should have to draw before doing any correction of the deformity. Approach deformity correction. Three questions have to be answered. Question number one, is the limb normal? Is the limb aligned? Question number two, if the limb is not aligned, where is the malalignment? And finally, how to correct the deformity. Is the limb normal? A normal limb is an aligned limb. Hip, knee, and ankle joints all are collinear to each other. An abnormal limb, hip, knee, and ankle joints are collinear to each other. And finally, it is seen by mechanical axis deviation. You can see here the mechanical axis deviation from the left side. And Web A all unpublished results 4.1 to plus minus 4 mn. Pele A all 1994 9.7 plus minus 6.8 6.8 mm. Look at this. This is a bowing of the femur at the same time, bowing of the tibia, O shaped deformity. O shaped deformity. Now, is the limb normal? That means if the mechanical axis in its normal position, the limb is aligned. If there is mad mechanical axis deviation more than normal, that is 8 millimeter medial to the center of the knee joint, limb is not aligned. 
now uh, always before doing any surgery uh, you must keep it in your mind normal alignment parameters of the hip knee and ankle just uh, i told you here these are the angles this is the 90 degree this is you can make it to keep it in your mind 87 here is 88 87 there is 87 and this is 90 four angles then you will be able to do any kind of uh, deformity correction so melalignment test whenever you are seeing that is varus deformity and valgus deformity you can see if this deformity is valgus here then what you can do lateral maxis, mechanical axis deviation denotes valgus deformity here you can see here and medial mechanical axis deformity here it denotes varus deformity if this you will get valgus and this is varus now question number two if the limb is not aligned where is the malalignment if you see the your limb is not aligned you should have to find out the malalignment and identification of the location of the malalignment this is seen by joint orientation angles what are the angles this abnormal lpfa means there is a deformity of the hip i showed you earlier abnormal ldfa or mpta there is deformity at the knee and ldta there is deformity at the ankle so these are the four angles you should have to know in various mechanical mechanical axis deviation there can be depressed mpta you can see here in varus this is the varus what is going to happen mpta is less than 85 and ldfa is greater than 90 and here ldfa this is m mechanical this is m mechanical this is greater than 90 and mpta less than uh, uh, 85 so in valgus whenever you see you have a valgus knee there can be increased mpta here you can see and it will be we know normally this mpta is 87 now we are getting here 90 that means you are getting valgus mechanical axis deviation so these are the things that you should have to keep it in your mind and decreased ldfa deformity in the distal femur both deformity both in distal femur and proximal tibia so what is the source of the deformity this is also very important source of the deformity you can see here mechanical axis deviation ldfa here 94 here is 87 we know these both are 87 it will it is 87 it will be it will also 87 but here is 94 that means deformity is here from the lateral side of the uh, distal femur and here you can see uh, mpta 82 we know mpta is 87 here we are getting mpta ldfa 94 that means deformity here and here both sides so these are the important uh, parameters angles here you can see uh, 87 in the mpta and uh, here is the 8, 82 is the mpta so your deformity is here proximal tibia and here you can see jlca is seven degree we know jlc is zero to two degree and ldfa 87 but mpta is 82 that means your deformity is middle side of proximal of the tibia and these are the melalignment source how you can identify whenever you are doing any correction try to go for a long axis of the whole limb then you will be able to understand how much you should have to calculate here mpta 87 this side is normal is 87 this is normal here is 94 that means it is abnormal it must be 87 here lateral lateral distal femur angle 87 this is okay but mpta is 82 and this is angulated here ldfa 94 this is 82 this is abnormal this is all abnormal and glca is 7 degree and here LDFA 87, this is okay, but GLC is increased and MPTA is 82, that is, it is also less, this is 87. 
So these are the angles. Now rotational deformity of the tibia. You just see patella forward. And if your patient lies in this way, you can see if you draw a line here, center of the thigh, so axis, thigh axis. This is thigh, femoral axis zero. This is positive, this is negative. If you draw a line before going, going for a correction of the deformity in the lower limb. Rotational deformity, you can see, dear friend, rotational 45 to that side, and here is the 45 to that side. And hip and ankle deformity don't affect the mechanical axis deviation. If you see the, your deformity in the proximal femur and deformity in the ankle, you will not get any kind of mechanical axis deviation. You define mechanical axis deviation. See your center of the head and center of the ankle is okay. But you are getting LDF, LDFA 115 degree. And this is also deformed. So how to correct the deformity? Once you have measured that these are the deformities you are getting in the hip, in the knee, or in the ankle, then you should have to decide yourself how you can correct the deformity. For this, we have to identify three things. Level of Kora, that is true apex of the deformity. Level of the hinge, where you should have to place the hinge, and the level of the osteotomy. And Kora and magnitude of the deformity. Kora is the level of the deformity. Kora means center of rotation of angulation. Now, dear friend, you can see the normal femur and varus tibia. Upper part, femur is okay, but deformity in the tibia. You draw the line. Once you draw the line, you'll see the true effects of the deformity, that is cora. And this is the bisectal line. Cora is the intersection of the proximal bone axis. Surgeon has no control over the level of the cora. This is very important. Bone can be divided into proximal and distal segment and below the deformity. Now, regarding the hinge, in reserve surgery, fixator, in reserve surgery, in reserve fixator has broadly two components, hinge by which you can correct the, any kind of deformity, hinge and pins by which we fix the Elizaro fixator to the bone, hinge is the most important component of the Elizaro apparatus. Surgeon has control, um, complete control over the level of the hinge. If you mismatch the hinge, you will not get good correction. So, surgeon has complete control over the level of the hinge. And now, speed correction of the hinges. You can see the rule of triangle is very easy. This is your uh, uh, bone deformity. This is your bone deformity. You can see here. And this is the formula. This is the formula AB uh, by AC is equal to DE by FG, 3 is to 1. You can go 3 times a day. You will, if not, 3 times a 3 degree angle. And you can correct uh, this one in this way. And normal fever and varus tibia, metaphysical deformity, you can see here, LDTA and coda. Uh, where is the coda near the joint? You can see here. So I'll talk later on the osteotomy rule. Now let us see the some case. Here, Melanion fracture left upper tibia ujenuvera. Look at this. From the front side, from the back side of the left tibia. Now, this is the first ring in the top and distally, and we have put the uh, wires. Then you can see here. The placement of the olive and the wires in the left side here. And this is the placement of the hinges. Hinges. This is the hinge. This is the hinge. This is the hinge. This is the deformity. And then you can see the here, the uh, upper ring and two. This is obliquely placed because and medially your hinge is here. That you should have to go for gradual correction. Look at this. We have corrected. This is before. And this is follow up after eight months. Now you can compare this one with this one. This is the axis is okay. Uh, patient is okay. Patient is happy. Now, case two, look at this 16 years old boy, whereas deformity, left upper tibia with five centimeter LLD. And if you draw the angle here, draw the angle here, you can see this is 20 degree from the back side and from the front side. 
and look at this this is okay now what to do you do a uh, put your uh wires like this like like this and this is the opening wedge osteotomy opening wedge uh, regenerate bone placement of the hinge gradual distraction and this is the oblique ring and regenerative bone is going on and finally you can see here from this to this and this is the final only after five months so at the same time you can go for shortening the poverty correction and it could increase the quality of the bone now normal femur and distal tibia varus normal your femur is normal but your distal tibia is varus that means ldta normally here we know 90 you are getting 88 88 here 88 ldta and this magnitude that is how much you should have to correct 40 degree angle and next you can see here post infective left tibia with ankle varus with 10 centimeter lld the problems how many problems ankle varus lld of a boy you can see here now uh, he is running 14 12 12 years sorry 12 13 years and during the treatment you can see uh, at the age of closing the growth plate so we uh, decided to go for this gradual osteotomy done gradual correction gradual correction by applying the four elizar uh, rings and this is a uh, good regenerative bone is going on you can see here in the proximal and in the distal part so this is uh, before this is after 11 months you can see from this from here both the ways here and here the proximal tibia and the distal tibia now your axis uh, uh, is okay and bone regenerated bone good regenerated bone is seen here so case four post-operative recurvatum you can recurvatum you can see various deformity of right leg 30 percent you can see you cannot correct that one but patient was complaining pain see if you draw the mechanical axis and anatomical axis and here you are getting a true apex here is the true apex of the deformity then i decide to go for osteotomy by putting the 1990 hinges the 1990 hinges one ring two ring and this is the hinges i've done the osteotomy that is in the true apex of the deformity and gradual distraction and finally you can see uh, recurvatum no after eight months follow-up so this is uh, final follow-up you can see here from this way to that way and this is the uh, thing that how we can go for correction of the illusor can you can you hear this one So we cannot hear the video sound, sir. The video oh. sound is not adequate. Yeah. So you cannot you cannot see the video sound. Look here. Uh. Now I'm I am telling. Now you can hear me. This is the true apex of the deformity, center of rotation of angulation. If you do a osteotomy in the top of the here, there is two sides. One is the convex side, and below is the convex side. Then gradual you go for distraction, then you are correcting the deformity and as well as you are getting that new regenerate bone. Line is collinear. This is osteotomy rule number one. This is osteotomy rule number one. If you tr uh, go for true apex of the deformity, do the osteotomy in the top of the convex side and gradual correction you will not get any translation and any rotation
Now this is the case. This is your deformity. If you put your hinge away from the coda, you will get a, this kind of displacement. Uh, so, uh, can you hear us, sir? I think uh, uh, there is a network problem uh, in uh, uh, Barisar's side. Uh, his, uh, yes, sir. Uh, no, nobody can. Uh, can you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah Barisar. Oh, yeah. Now, now you can see. Yes, sir. We can see you, sir. Then you are getting compression type of deformity correction. Short. You put your hinge away, far away from the true apex of the deformity. If you do the osteotomy here, then you are getting wide range of, and you are making a displacement. So placement of the hinge is very important. True effects of the deformity, then, and you go for gradual distraction, and what you get, get see, is coming up proximal and that one is that means you are going for displacement translation uh, and if you put your hinge in the front and top You are getting this kind of displacement, and this proximal is getting below, and this tile is coming up. Positions. So, uh, osteotomy level one, surgeon has relative control over the level of the osteotomy site. It depends on the condition of the bone and the soft Now, rules of osteotomy. See, rule one, when you're, this is the rule one, this is the axis, you are going for this, then you are getting this way, seeing the true apex, or you remove a part, you are getting this kind of uh, correction. This is remo removing the wedge. Rule two, this is your bisector line, aka at Cora. And then if you put your hinge below the level of the true apex of the deformity, you will get this kind of cutting. With angulation and a little bit translation. And this is the with translation. Seventy degree. Normally, you should have to know LDTA lateral distal tibial angle ninety degree. Then you have remained twenty degree. See, you can carry this one to get the line. This is the axis to get uh, twenty degree correction. You like this, and after that you can put plate or anything here. But with the lizard, it is very easy to apply. So this is normal tibia and femur, and 
you can see normal tibia now i'm talking about the varus femur and this is case number five you can see here varus femur with implant failure in situ with three centimeter lld policeman he was treated elsewhere then you can see the here left side 20 degree angulation now see the x-ray he was treated elsewhere with this plate was broken deformity here then came to my place i removed all this put this with the lizarov you can see here approximately only shans here only the wires then patient was walking with the apparatus this is the beauty of lizarov you can see if you put apply apply the lizarov properly patient will not complain anything and after six months follow-up because surgery was done two times three times here to me one time and before to my place two times as a result what we have seen we have seen the knee stiffness that is the contracture of the knee with a little bit deformity jlca here you can see a little bit increase here normal jlca then see here after uh, uh, 11 months patient came to my place this is before this is after now this is with this to this situation now patient is willing to go for bending the knee and we can do that because we know this is plastic now you can see on the table 90 degree this is almost okay now you can see here is big operations but five steps operations nothing to be worried for that so now you can see after four months patient is happy 90 degree can flex after treatment sagittal brain deformity also you can see here these are the different angles how you can correct this is also you can see a jlc is three degree jlc here is three degree mpta 80 it must be 87 the ldfn 95 now you can carry this one eight degree and 12 degree jlc see here now multiple deformity whenever you see the any segment there are two or three deformities how you can correct this one you can see very easy you can calculate and here you can see here 35 degree 35 degree magnitude here is 37 degree magnitude draw a line here draw a line here here also same axis axis this is the connecting point then you can gradual correction to go for mechanical axis in this way 35 37 degree and finally you can see here LPF you are getting 90, LDPA you are getting 87, 87, four angles, 87, 87, this is 90 and this is 90. Just 90, top, below 90, in the knee, opposite, 87, 87. So you can correct your deformity easily. Uh, defining deformity, you can see here, femur, joint orientation line, I told you in starting point of my lecture, these are the joint orientation angles, proximal distal, mechanical axis lines, and you should have to determine the cora and of course the uh, measure the angulatory deformity now you can see here this is multiple deformity tibia and femur both and uh, you must draw the angles if you take the full axis uh, limb that is good and i am taking full x uh, x-ray uh, in my center all all the time femur hip and knee uh, and ankle so see uh, done the osteotomy placement of the hinges you can see here this is follow-up only after six months bone quality uh, was bad now you can see here from front side from back side front and easily now we can see the axis full axis so dear friend this is after uh, three years follow-up mm. by Elizarov technique doing the Elizarov surgery, the O type, uh, O type deformity. Uh, this is you can see here multiple deformity. Uh, I'm going to finish within a short time. This you can see again. You should have to draw the angles. You can see the patella tracking during correction with biocompatible thin weights. 
because bone quality, bone is osteoporotic, vitamin D deficiency, and that's why it is better to go for uh, Ilizara wires. And then you can see after correcting the deformity, see the bone is not good. You can go for nailing. Sometimes very difficult to go for nailing or plate. You cannot hold the plates with the plates. So, and this is the final multiple deformity. Government teacher, uh, government hospital, BCS cadet. At the age of 32, he came to a place to go for deformity correction. And I took it as a challenge because age is too much. And you can see if I know cabovirus, genuval gum, bilateral patella tracking problems. But patient was very much cooperative. And only with wires, you can see with placement of the proper placement of the hinges and during treatment. And this is now see, he's happy from that situation to this situation. From that situation to this situation. Patient is happy. And bone quality, you can draw the axis of the whole limb. You can see hip, knee, and angle. A little bit deformity is still there in the angle, but he is getting physiotherapy. Now, from this situation to assistant professor of a government college, now from that situation to this situation, it is a great achievement uh, for uh, the people, those who are. Uh, who can we can help a little bit with this uh, kind of Ilizaro, magical Ilizaro. And this is my end. And finally, I would like to tell dear friends, Ilizaro fixated and his biological principles of gradual destruction uh, revolutionized the management of the limb deformities. What are the important things? ALLD, bone and joint contractures, soft tissue contractures, bone loss, delayed and non-unions, infections, transverse destruction you can go, that is you can make the bone widen and of course the, you can save the ischemic limbs. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you so much again. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your beautiful presentation and I think uh, that was an excellent presentation for all level doctors. Uh, and uh, we learned many things uh, from your lectures. Uh, again, thank from all doctors of the subcontinent as well as the uh, Junior Forum of Elizarum. Now, I would like to request uh, Professor Goni Mulla, sir, uh, to share his knowledge uh, regarding the deformity correction by Elizarum. We all know that uh, you are doing a uh, lot of Elizarum, uh, so you have a uh, lot of experience regarding the a deformity correction as well as the other experiences also. So, sir, would you please think, uh, share your valuable knowledge with us? Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Nandi. I think uh, Professor Nobika will say the first, huh? uh, because he was our guest, and uh, I will speak in the last. Mm -hmm. Nobika, okay, then, okay, sir. Uh, uh, next, uh, last of all, um, I. So, okay. in this regime, you try to follow it. Professor Nobika from Moscow. Uh, from Kurgan. From Kurgan. From Kurgan. Yes. Kurgan is a very beautiful place. We went there in one time with Professor Bari. And you are coming to Bangladesh also. So we are a, a very good friend to each other. So I think uh, I would like to request Professor Nobikov to share your experience regarding the deformity correction uh, and uh, corrected by the Elizabeth of my method. So, I would like to request Professor Nabikov from Kurgan. Thank you, thank you, Professor. And uh, today I am uh, too much learned from my friend, my teacher from Bali. And uh, the methods of Lizarov give us uh, possibilities study all of our life because any doctor in any country has patient with deformity. And uh, when we have knowledge, when we have principal knowledge about deformity, about level of uh, deformity, level of correction, apex uh, deformity, and when we have excellent possibilities, 
during the treatment, not after surgery, during the treatment, after one week, after one month, on the end of treatment, Elizarov methods and Elizarov frame give us possibilities to correct any problem. Because uh, today I have a few patients from Moscow. Seven months ago, doctor started lengthening. Before surgery, patient have a deformity. But on the end of lengthening, patient have deformity. Because all period of uh, lengthening, patient was alone, without control of doctor. And on the finish, patient has some problems. Elizarov frame give us possibilities to go away from this problem and any time when we uh, touch femur or tibia with uh, Elizarov methods, we can correct any um, uh, many plane deformity or uni deformity. And I am happy because uh, your country, India, in other country, just now uh, start use this method methods, and we understand you. And one more, Elizara frame give us possibilities uh, follow not only uh, anatomical uh, rules. Elizara frame give us possibilities uh, finish treatment with individual result because sometimes when we have one side deformity in other side is normal if we will follow uh, treatment by anatomical angles like now we explain dr barry on the end of treatment we will have different shape of uh, legs when we make photo, x-rays before treatment, and when we know uh, all of angles uh, in other side, during the treatment, we will follow uh, individual angles of the patient. And I am happy because just now we uh, talk with one language, not English language. We talk with Elizabeth language and many doctors in the world understand us. Barry, another doctor, dear colleagues, I am very happy and uh, I think after this, many doctors will follow us because today we need to think about what will be in the future. And our message, Elizabeth, this is not Elizarov just now, this is uh, for all of the world, for all of the patients in the world, and we can help with uh, con conference, uh, with webinar like this, we can uh, communicate directly when patient uh, have some problem, doctor ask another doctor, and we can very uh, quickly support for this doctor. Thank you for you. I am happy because uh, more than 10 webinars uh, and all of time uh, so many doctors has real interest for our collaboration. Thank you. And I uh, want invite you for our Elizara of reading what will be in this June when we will celebrate century of our father of Elizarov. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your nice speech. Now, I would like to request uh, Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir, to share his experience regarding the deformity correction by Elizarov. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tanuri. Thank you, sir, Bari, sir, Amitov, sir, Mukula, sir. So, Elizarov has been a real boon as far as I feel in the in deformity, all cases deformity correction, whether 
in adults or pediatric cases. No other device can do it well because we need to attain a normal mechanical axis, maintain length, do the normal deformity corrections. Besides Silesero, these days I'm also uh, doing uh, lengthening over nail and in cases of ortho ECV also, and in some cases with LRS. So altogether I've seen that nothing is better than Elezero that gives a normal uniform correction and natural correction, sir. Thank you, sir. Very much uh, for your short speech. Uh, now I'd like to request the uh, Honorable Professor and the President of Bangladesh Orthopedic Society, Professor Gonemula, sir, to uh, say something regarding our topic. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to be here and see the learned speaker and also our friend Navikov and mm -hmm. our junior friend. Mr. Samsuluda from India. Thanks the honorable and reverend teacher, Professor Bari. His expertise is coming from Kurgan. Once upon a time, there are the surgeons, particularly the orthopedic surgeons, are very much worried. The yeah, how much we can do the deformity correction in the deformed foot, ankle, particularly in the virus deformity, particularly uh, both the sides and the, in on side, femur, genovirus, genovalgam, and equinocavirus deformity in the leg. Also, our senior teachers are very much worried in that time, and they have tried to oral uh, open reduction and internal physician by Rashmin or any other internal physician device. But 50% of the uh, result of 50% is bad. The 50% is the infection and the implant failure of that. And our aim and objective is to correction of the department is not well corrected. When Elizabeth is coming up in the middle of the 70s or the middle of the 80s after coming back from Professor Bari from Gurgaon, coming back from Gurgaon to the different parts of the country and in our National Institute in Detroit, our doctors are very much happy and the patients are also happy. And we learned some things from the books something from the teachers and something from Professor Bari. Now our teacher, uh, teachers, our junior doctors, particularly our resident doctors are very much interested in the deformity correction. We have a very heavy headache to a genovalgam, genovirus deformity in the both the sides. And at the same time, the genu, uh, equine capovirus deformity once upon a time, we do not know about the, we do not, we do not take the, uh, in, in the mental consideration, take the consideration that we have to, we have to think into axis and the Quora. But we, we must, we now, we are uh, alert to be axis and the Quora. Once upon a time, our doctors is not um, uh, at all known to about the Quora. When Barishai, or the professor of Nidor, when I was speaking, somebody, most of the people are annoyed with him. Most of the doctors are annoyed with him, and they are very much angry. The, what you are thinking, what you are doing, what you are, what is your objective? Everywhere there is a little of, everywhere there is a little of. And Professor Bari was puzzled sometimes. I, as his junior, friend and brother, I always support him because I'm very much interested for his biomechanical, biomechanical, biotechnological, and orthopedic osteosynthetic fellow in the country. And that's why after that, now all the doctors are very much cooperative in all the respects, particularly the other magnitude also. So today's topics, I am very much very much amazed 
uh, before that many of the lectures from professor bari and others i myself do the lecture also you know that i am also the secretary general of him i may be the president of the society but i am the secretary of professor bari and i try to do something and when i am puzzled to anything for correction of the limb then i refer the case to professor bari but still still our doctors are not 100% confident to the elizera application and know the axis and cora uh, in in the deformity correction they send to the senior doctors they are open the they are export the uh, 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 cora they are export the uh, deform deform site and doing a nail or doing a plate still now but time is demanding time is going ahead so gradually deformity correction and managed by elizera application is going uh, a first in the like the advanced countries so in this opportunity i would like to uh, convey my bless convey my salam and convey my best regards to professor bari honored professor because of the tremendous activities regarding the elizera and the final uh, uh, final uh, ultimate solution of the uh, deformity deformity correction and others problem particularly the infective non union it is by headache it is my headache only infective non union so i convey my best salam to novikov and also samsunoda and also uh, dr sanbir ashraf the young guys young good orthopedic surgeons the consultant of orthopedics in nitor he has many dimension also he has a very good arthroscopic surgeons so uh, i think we uh, i think kurgan uh, is our best center when coming back to bari then we, it is very much possible to do many things uh, by by the doctors of bangladesh by the orthopedic surgeons of bangladesh so we have made a good relation with kurgan with kurgan by uh, professor bari he is our bridge and our doctors i myself went to kurgan visiting kurgan and see what they were doing so i think uh these are these, these are the nutshell uh, and uh, in this lesson uh we must in, in interested and inspire our junior colleagues and junior doctors to all of them are no, not the reserve surgeons but they should be minimum they should be learn some things where there is no solution there is no solution there is a solution of uh, 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 elizera so in this regards i i would again uh, like to pay my homage by uh, my regards to my teacher and my senior colleagues professor bari sir novika and my best wishes to mr samsuluda with the few words i would call good by space thanks mr uh, tanvir and thanks ras tv by the help of you and your media we are discussing a good chapter in the orthopedics <coughs> though still it is it is <coughs> not in the all level of the country but if we start it from our nito national institute tertiary hospital in the different parts of the country then it will be very easy possible to go through the village level also thank you very much for your kind attention thank, thank you, you thank much. you thank you for your excellent you, speech you, uh, yes sir uh, and uh, uh, definitely uh, it's a blessings uh, for us to have a professor like you uh, without your encouragement uh, we cannot improve we cannot make this orthopedic solution academy so thank you very much again sir for being with us 
and for inspiring us. Yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Shamsul Rajasar want to say something. Uh, we have uh, a very uh, we have we have been time constraint, so uh, within thirty minutes, uh, thirty seconds, you have to finish here. Uh, Thank you. Just just as I want to add one word that uh, now in all my deformity cases, I use uh, the whole Ninja app that I learned from Baltimore to calculate all the deformities. That makes the uh, calculations very easy, exact, and uh, pre of planning very easy. That's that's what to add. Thank you, Professor Navikam sir. Uh, thank you, Professor Goni Mula sir. Thank you, Dr. Shamsul Rajesh sir. And uh, finally, I want to thank uh, the. Magical speaker, Professor Mofakarul Bari, sir, for being with us. And I am Dr. Mahmoud Tanvir Ashraf. want to thank Raj TV and definitely the Renata Pharmaceuticals Limited for sponsoring our programs. I uh, hope uh, we will meet you in the next Friday. Uh, till then, I want to say a salam alaikum and bye bye to all the viewers of Orthopedic Solution Academy. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.